my testimony started when I was 19 years old. Um, that was the first time that I heard the true gospel. Um, but before that, I was actually um, raised going to church. Um, I was raised mostly by my grandparents. Um, both of my parents were drug addicts um, during my childhood and abandoned me. And um, um, thankfully, my grandparents um, took me in and brought me up until I was a teenager. And I went to church with my um, grandparents um, every Sunday. They were very religious. We went to a Methodist church. And I remember at, at the, the age of five, um, my grandmother telling me that in order to be saved, I needed to ask Jesus into my heart and accept him as my savior. And um, that's what I did. And um, I didn't notice any change in my life from doing that, but that's what I was told that you needed to do. And I didn't question that as a five-year-old. Um, but as I got older, I started to see um, the lifestyle that my parents lived, um, going to bars all night. And um, <laughs> my dad was sort of a hippie in the 60s and um, just seeing, you know, the way that he talked about those days was very appealing to me. And I was sort of gravitating more towards um, that kind of partying lifestyle at even a very young age. So I was, I was 11 and I was starting to hang out with kids who were 19 and 20 and going to frat parties and um, <clears throat> I started smoking, I started drinking, I started smoking pot um, and I thought that that was great and fun and, um, and I really loved the things that I was doing. But um, as I continued on that path when I was about 16 and in high school, um, <clears throat> I was already to the point where I was smoking pot um, all day. I would, I would smoke before I left for school in the morning. Um, I would leave school to smoke pot at lunch. I would smoke pot after I got home from school. I would smoke pot in the evening. And, um, and, I, and I started to suffer really badly from depression and um, other mental illness type issues like anxiety. And that continued on until I was a freshman in college. I was living away from home for the first time and I was living in the dorms and I was still doing this. I was just staying stoned all day long. Um, and then I was you know, going to parties and music festivals and things like that on the weekend where I would do harder drugs. And um, it got to the point with that that I really didn't want to do those things anymore. And I felt guilty and convicted and um, and I felt miserable. I, I was really, really unhappy. And um, I was suffering very badly from self-loathing um, to the point where I, I couldn't look people in the eye anymore. I, um, I stopped having relationships with pretty much almost everybody in my life because I just felt let down all the time, like I couldn't trust anybody, um, like I was unworthy to be loved or, or anything like that. And, um, and the only person I was really still <clears throat> letting in was Chris, my, my boyfriend, but even, even that relationship, we had a lot of um, problems and fighting and arguing. And <clears throat> I... I um I started to really cry out to the Lord and I just said, you know, if if I'm really saved, if I'm really a Christian, why why can't I stop doing all these things that I hate doing, but I seem to have no power over it? And why am I so miserable if I'm a Christian? Why can't I be happy? How do I be happy? <clears throat> and I just started to think, you know, how do I even know that this is the truth? And I don't want to believe something just because that's what I was raised to believe, or that's what my grandmother says is true, or that's what the guy up at the front at the church says is true. Um, and I just thought, you know, Muslims grow up and think they have the truth and Hindus grow up and think they have the truth. And I have no proof that this is the truth at all. So um, if there really is a God out there, then you can show me what the truth is and I want it from you. And that was my prayer. And <clears throat> it was around the same time that I was looking for um, 
tickets to a music festival that was sold out. I was looking on the internet, trying to see if anybody had um, tickets that they were selling. And um, it, this was like before Facebook or anything. I was on these forums and um, <clears throat> I stumbled across this man who was posting about the Holy Spirit and um, how when he received the Holy Spirit, his life completely miraculously changed and how the original evidence of that um, that change of life was that he spoke in tongues. And um, I'd never heard that before, even in all my years of going to church and, and reading the Bible. And, and I was very involved as a child. Um, I'd never heard that before. And so I messaged him and I said, you know, where are you getting this from in the Bible? And um, and he showed me where it says um, in Mark that believers have signs that follow them. And he showed me where it says in John that um, uh, you must be born again of water and the spirit. And then he showed me in the book of Acts where um, when the Holy Spirit was poured out for the first time, uh, the evidence of that, the thing that they all experienced was that they spoke in tongues. And I had never seen that before. And I said to him, well, I know I'm saved because I accepted Jesus as my savior. And he said, where's that in the Bible? And I thought about it and I thought, well, I don't know, but I'll find it. And I spent days <laughs> looking through my Bible, trying to find where it says, be saved, accept Jesus as your savior or invite him into your heart or pray the sinner's prayer. And it wasn't there. It wasn't there at all. Um, but what he did show me was how it says, repent, be baptized, which means to be fully immersed in the water which is something that the Methodists don't do. I was sprinkled as an infant. I couldn't find that in the Bible anywhere either. And, um, and how, um, and then received the Holy Spirit. And he showed me again and again and again in the Bible where the evidence of that happening to people was that they spoke miraculously in this language. And more than that, he told me about his own testimony and how his life changed when he had that experience and how other people's lives changed when they had that experience and that they um, had the power to completely stop smoking and drinking and doing drugs and things like that. And I wanted that. I wanted that power desperately because I just felt like I, I didn't have that kind of self-control within me and um, and how they were filled with joy and peace and um when he was telling me these things about these miracles, I mean, literally the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I just thought, I, I wanted to know why there weren't any miracles anymore. And now he's telling me that there are. And I thought, this is, this is what I've asked for. I asked for God to show me the truth. And, and here he's telling me that there's proof. And that really was what, um, what got me was he said to me, you don't have to take my word for it. You don't even have to believe what the Bible says. You can experience this for yourself and then you will know. And I thought, okay, fine. I want it for myself and um, I want to know. And um, my testimony is very long, but um, a short time after that, I, I did get baptized by somebody in the Revival Fellowship. I started praying for the Holy Spirit. I didn't receive it right away. Um, a lot of people do. I didn't, but I, um, but I knew that that at that point, I knew that it was the truth. I knew it was what I needed, and um, and I really, um, <clears throat> I really sought for it. I didn't give up. And um, a couple months later, <clears throat> Chris and I <clears throat> made a trip out to California, where um, another fellowship like this fellowship is, and um, and. Um, the second night we were there, we were having dinner at, at, at the pastor's house with several people. And, um, and they said, you know, do you want to have some more prayer for the Holy Spirit? And I did, I, I prayed for the Holy Spirit every chance I got. And I said, yes, let's pray. And we got down on our knees. <clears throat> and I don't know what was different about that specific time. But um, I started out saying hallelujah, like I'd been doing for months. And, um, and a couple minutes later, it was like my brain just went blank. And then all of a sudden I came back to myself and realized that I was speaking in this other language that I had never learned. I had never heard before. And I started sobbing because I knew that I had just experienced a miracle. I knew that what had just happened to me wasn't something that I did. Um, but it was like for the first time in my life, I knew beyond a doubt that God was real, that Jesus is alive and I had just received his spirit and and had this confirmation of it and not only that but in that instant I felt 
um, my life change. I, I, I felt it. I felt the depression lift off me, the anxiety and the other mental illness issues. It was just gone, gone. And um, <clears throat> the desire to smoke and, and drink and do all those things gone. It, it was like one minute I was a cigarette smoker. I'd started when I was 11 years old and, and this was at the age of 19. So for eight years, I'd had this addiction that I couldn't kick. And then in the next instant, I, it was like, I'd never smoked a cigarette in my life. It was just gone. And, um, <clears throat> and I knew that that was a, a power um, that I didn't have in myself. It, it was a power greater than myself. And, and yeah, my life completely changed. And I, I didn't have the desire to, to do those things anymore that, that I did. Um, I, I just wanted to live this new life that the Lord gave me. And he's, he's given me so many blessings since then. Um, um, a, a wonderful marriage, two kids that have now had that same experience, both of them receiving the spirit, speaking in tongues. I've seen their lives changed. Um, so many miracles, um, healings and provision, so many um, testimonies of, of um, the Lord providing jobs and houses and cars and just everything that we um, could possibly need. And um, it's been um, 19 years um, that we've been spirit filled, 18 or 19 years. And I just can't thank him enough for everything that he's given me and done for me. Amen. <laughs>